Mutual Broadcasting System presents Roger Kilgore, Public Defender. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm Roger Kilgore, public defender, a paid servant of the public. It's my duty to defend any person accused of a crime who is unable to pay for his own defense. The case of Eddie Lewis began one evening as Bud Swift regained consciousness in the ambulance that was rushing him to the hospital. What? What? What hit me? Somebody put a knife in your back, Swift. A knife? Got any idea who it was? What's it to you? I'm a cop. That's what I figured. Hey, Doc. What is it, Swift? Am I going to be okay? I think so, but you've been very lucky. Two inches lower and... Yeah. Well, the punk that tried to kill me ain't going to be so lucky. Who is he, Swift? I'll take care of him myself, Cop. Now, we've got jails for people who do that. Yeah. And we've got the same jails for people who take the law into their own hands. Now, you don't want to go to jail, do you? Leave me alone, will you? I ain't talking. Swift, I found some papers in your wallet that show you to be a prize fighter. So what? You... Got bad news for me? I'm afraid so. Of course, I can't be sure until we get you to the hospital, but my preliminary examination shows that perhaps your shoulder muscle has been severed. Good Lord. Now, now, it doesn't mean that with surgery and proper care, you won't recover the use of that arm, but... What? Yeah, I get it. I won't be a cripple, but I'll never fight in the ring again. That's a tough break. Yeah. I'll never fight. You don't want to see the guy who did this to you get away, do you? No. He ain't getting away. Then don't go after him yourself. Tell me who he is. What do you think he'll get, Copper? Ten years. Yeah. Ten years and the pen can ruin a guy for life. Okay. The guy you want, Eddie Lewis. All right, Captain. I'll give the public defender your message as soon as he comes in. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Good morning, Miss Carpenter. Oh, Mr. Kilgore. For a phone just this minute. What does he want? Well, the police judge has referred a new case to you, the Eddie Lewis case. Hmm. What's the charge? Attempted murder for stabbing someone by the name of Bud Swift. Bud Swift? That name's very familiar. He's a prize fighter, Mr. Kilgore. Oh, yes, yes. I saw him fight in one of the preliminaries at the arena the other night. He knocked out his opponent in the second round of a scheduled six-round bout. Well, he's in the Midtown Hospital now. Uh, when was he stabbed? Last night, around 8 o'clock. Did the captain tell you where Lewis is being held? Yes, sir, at the city jail. Okay, thanks. That's where I'll be if you want me. Eddie, what do you do for a living? Nothing. Haven't you got a job? No. Why not, Eddie? Don't you want a job? Sure I do. I want one bad. Well, don't tell me you haven't been able to find one these days. I found plenty, Mr. Kilgore. But they weren't for me. How old are you, Eddie? Twenty-three. You look strong enough and healthy enough. Sure, I know what I look like. And I know what I feel like inside. What do you mean? I got a slug in my belly during the war. They took it out all right, but... Let's see. I've never been the same like I used to be. I get sick so often I can't hold down the regular job. I'm sorry about that, Eddie. It's okay. I'm not griping. Government sends me a check every month, and Hal Humphreys lets me pick up a few bucks every time I can. Who's Hal Humphreys? A nice guy. He owns a gym on Cedar Street where a lot of fighters train. What do you do there? Or I help out when the place gets too busy for Punchy. He's a regular porter. To do the job all by himself. Is uh, that the gym where Bud Swift does his training? Yeah. Eddie, 
Uh, where were you last night, around 8 o'clock? I was at the gym from 7 o'clock until half past 9. Anybody see you there? Sure, everybody see me. Who's everybody? Well, gee, I don't know. There was a big crowd there. But Hal Humphrey seen me a couple of minutes after I come in. I was watching some guy punch in a bag when Hal came over to me and said... Oh, what's the matter, kid? You're not working tonight. I don't feel so good, Hal. All right, too bad. That's my stomach again. You know. Yeah, I know. Hey, you should have stayed home. No, I wouldn't, though. Just go nuts thinking about myself. Sure. You don't mind if I just stick around without helping out, do you? No, have fun. It's your time, Betty. Take it easy. Listen, Hal, if, if I should feel better later on... Sure, just let me know. I'll be around. What happened after that, Eddie? Nothing. I hung around until half past nine. Then the pains in my stomach got so bad I had to go home. And then you have got an alibi, haven't you? Yeah, but the cops locked me up anyhow. Who told the police that you stabbed Bud Swift? I don't know. Eddie, did you have any reason for trying to kill Bud Swift? No, Mr. Kilgore, no reason at all. But, Eddie... Excuse me, Miss Kilgore. Huh? Oh, what is it, Tom? Walton just got a call from the DA's office. Uh Uh-huh. The DA wants to see that young fellow right away, so we'll get through with him. Well, I was about to leave, but uh, is Mr. Howard coming here? No, he wants us to bring the prisoner to his office. Good, I'll go with him. Sit down, Lewis. Thanks, Mr. Howard. Roger, I'm glad you came here. Maybe we can settle this matter right now. What do you mean, Sam? Well, Lewis told you he was innocent, didn't he? Yes. I suppose he also told you that he had no motive for stabbing Bud Swift last night. That's right, Sam. Well, he hasn't told you the truth, Roger. He had a strong motive for wanting Swift out of the way. That ain't so. And last night he tried to kill him. No, I didn't. Roger, this fellow told the police that he was in Hal Humphrey's gym last night from 7 o'clock until 9.30. So the police questioned every man that they could find who was in that place last night, and not one of them remembered seeing him. What? But I was there, I tell you. I was even talking to Hal Humphrey himself. You were not there, Lewis. You were outside the restaurant on Pine Street, where Swift was having his dinner. I was not. Swift says he saw you there as he was going inside a few minutes before seven. And I think you hung around until he came out at eight o'clock. No, I didn't. It was pretty dark by then, and you followed him to the parking space next to the restaurant. That's crazy. You waited until Swift was getting in his car, and then you stabbed him in the back. No. You got it all wrong. Eddie, were you outside that restaurant on Pine Street a few minutes before seven last night? Oh, maybe I go by it on my way to the gym. Did you stop there? Well, maybe I stopped to light a cigarette. How can I remember? But you say you didn't wait for Bud Swift to come out. I didn't even see him, Mr. Kilgore. If I had, I'd have stopped to talk to him. Like you talked to him a week ago? Huh? What happened a week ago, Sam? Lewis and Bud Swift had an argument over a girl, Judy Nichols. And Lewis threatened Swift. Threatened him? What about that, Eddie? Well, apparently he'd rather not talk just now. But here's the story, Rogers. The police got it from Bud Swift and Hal Humphreys. Humphreys? What does he know about? The incident took place in his office at the gym. He and Bud were talking when Lewis came in and slammed the door. Hey, what's the idea? I want to see Bud Swift, Hal. Oh, well, we're busy. The next time, try not to. Take it easy, Hal. Can't you see the guy's mad? You bet I'm mad. You've been making some lousy cracks about Judy, Bud. Me? Yeah, you. You've been telling guys she'll go out with anybody anytime. Now, listen. You don't know what All you... a guy's got to do is take her to a movie, a buy her a soda, and she'll... Why, you dumb palook. If you were all busted up inside, I'd lay one right in your... Go on, and take a swing at me. Why don't you... Ah, beat it, will you? Listen, Bud, Judy's my girl. And if I find out you've been talking ah, to me... Not... Or if I ever find you're going out with her... Yeah? Again, what'll you do? Well... Well, maybe I can't trade punch for punch with you. But there are other ways I can pay you off. Ways that'll hurt a lot more. And I ain't kidding. And that, Roger, happened just last week. Well, Eddie, what about it? The truth, Mr. Kilgore. But it don't mean I tried to kill him for that. No, but you did try to kill him because he took your girl away from you, didn't you? No, who told you that? Your ex-girlfriend, Judy Nichols, told a detective I sent to question him. Look, Mr. Kilgore, I've been in love with Judy for about six months. But I I never got up the nerve to ask her to marry me. I had nothing to offer her, no job, no decent future. I see. Well, the other night, me and Judy had a date. We went to a cheap movie, and then when I brought her home, we stopped outside the house. And she said... Well, goodbye, Eddie. 
Goodbye. You mean good night, don't you? No, I... I can't see anymore. What's the matter? Bud Swift has asked me to marry him. Bud? Yes, and I accepted him. Oh. I'm sorry. I hope... Oh, Eddie, I know how you feel about me, but... I never said I loved you, did I? No. You never said it. I've always liked you, and I... I still like you. A lot. I, you don't have to make it easy for me. But I want you to understand, I... I can't help it if I'm crazy about Bud, can I? Why? Well, I, I had no idea it was like that, Judy. I... I thought he was just another guy you were going out with. I'm sorry, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> well, what does the odd guy say at a time like this? Do I... Do I wish you health and happiness? If you... If you want to. Okay. I wish you health and happiness. And, and, and when I see Bud, I'll tell him the same. No, no, don't say anything to Bud, Eddie. But, but why not? Well, well, we sort of decided not to tell anyone for a while, except our folks. And I don't want Bud to know that I told you. He might misunderstand. You, you know what I mean, Eddie. You see, Roger, he was sore at Bud Swift because he took his girl away from him. No, I wasn't sore at him. I felt pretty lousy when Judy told me about her and Bud, but I didn't blame him. Fred, I don't understand, Eddie. Look, I knew Judy didn't love me. I knew I didn't have a chance, so... So when she told you about Bud, you just calmly accepted it? Yeah. It was tough, but I wasn't sore at anyone. If I'd have wanted to kill Brett, I could have waited for him until he got home that night and done it then. Betty, why didn't you tell me the story before? Oh, Judy asked me not to say nothing about what she told me, so... Oh, I wasn't going to talk to anyone about it. I see. Sam, who told the police that Eddie stabbed Bud Swift? It was Bud himself, Roger. Did he see him at the time of the stabbing? No, but he saw him hanging around the restaurant an hour before. On the basis of the other evidence I've got... All, uh, all of which happens to be circumstantial, Sam. Well, that's true, Roger, but I can't ignore it. Something wrong here. Bud Swift said some terrible things about Judy Nichols a week ago. Yes. And a few days later, he asked her to marry him. Also, he didn't know that Judy had told Eddie about it. And still, he named Eddie as his attacker. Yes, he did. Sam, I'm going to the hospital to find out what's what. That punk's fixed me good, Mr. Kilgore, but good. The doctors think you'll be all right, but... Yeah, sure. I think you'll even be able to fight again. Oh, stop kidding me. I know what the ambulance doctor told me. Well, he made only a quick examination. Okay. We'll see who's right when I get out of here. Bud, why did you tell the police that Eddie had stabbed you? Because he did. Well, how can you be so sure? You didn't see him. What was he hanging around a restaurant for? Well, that was an hour before. He claims that he wasn't hanging around, that he was just passing by. Then why did he make out like he didn't see me? Are you sure he made out... Yeah. Was coming toward him when he turned the other way and started light a cigarette. I figured if the guy didn't want to talk to me, to heck with him. So I went into the restaurant. Did you see him when you came out? No, but that don't mean he wasn't hiding from place. Look, Mr. Kilgore. The guy said he'd get me if I ever went out with Judy again. Well, I went out with Judy again, and he got me. And you think that just because he threatened you, he had to be the one who stabbed you? Yeah. I got no other enemies. I see. But you said some pretty awful things about Judy. I didn't say nothing, Mr. Kilgore. Then why was Eddie sorry? Look, look, all the guys in the neighborhood know how that palooka feels about Judy. And some of them are wise guys. They were just kidding them when they told them I said lousy things about her. Hmm. When do you and Judy expect to get married? Huh? Judy told the police you and... What? She... Holy smoke, is everybody not... But are you saying that you aren't planning to marry Judy? I am saying I never even thought about it. We, we, we just been friends. Why, I never even kissed her. What's she trying to do? I don't know, Bud, but I'm going to try and find out. Well? Are you Miss Judy Nichols? Yes. I'm the public defender, Roger Kilgore. Oh, the public defender. Oh, come in, come in. Thank you. You're the man who helped 
people when they get arrested. Yes, I... You're going to help Eddie, aren't you? You're going to see that he gets out of jail. Do you want him to get out? Or I'll die if they send him away. I don't care what he did. Judy, are you in love with Eddie? Or do you want him out of jail because your conscience is bothering you? No, I'm in love with him. I've always been in love with him. Then why did you tell me you were going to marry Bud? I was afraid. Afraid of what, Judy? For myself. That's why I couldn't get Eddie out of my mind. When I went out with another boy, I kept thinking of Eddie. Naturally. You were in love with him. But I didn't want to be. I didn't want to get into something that, that could never be any good for me. Why do you say that? Because Eddie didn't have a job? Because he couldn't hold a job. Oh, I know he's tried. I, I've met him after work when he was working. and He was so sick he could hardly talk. The next day he went back to the job and he kept going back and trying to work until he was fired. That happened over and over again. Judy, isn't it possible that Eddie might get well someday? I don't know, but he lost so many jobs, I decided that maybe it'd be better for both of us if we, if we didn't see each other again. But I made up a story. The rottenest story in the world. Judy, was Eddie sore at Bud when you told him? No. No, he was awful nice about it. He, he even said he was going to wish him health and happiness. Oh, Mr. Kildo, you've got to get Eddie out of jail. I'll marry him tomorrow. You just get him out. Why did you tell the police that story? Didn't you realize that you were giving evidence against Eddie that might convict him? No, I didn't realize anything. The detective came here this morning and asked me a lot of questions. I was afraid of being caught in a lie, so I, I told him the same story. Judy, you say that you're in love with Eddie. Oh, he's got no idea how much, Mr. Kilgore. But still, you believe that he tried to commit murder. What? Hasn't it occurred to you that he might be innocent? I... Oh, oh good heavens, I'm been losing my mind. Just, just because the cops arrested him don't mean he's guilty, does he? Of course not. Why, he claims that he has an alibi. Then he has. But it doesn't seem to be any good. At any rate, I'm going over to Humphrey's gym and check on it myself. <laughs> Jim last night. What's that? Yeah, yeah, he, he was in the gym. What time was he there, Punchy? He was there. Al and Lefty shouldn't have said he wasn't. Ah. Why didn't you tell this to the police? The police? Cops. I, I didn't see no cops. 
They were in the gym this morning, questioning everyone. I didn't see no cuts. I got a haircut this morning. And how helpless did I? Uh, listen, Punchy, do you know anything else? Yeah. I know something about Bud Swift. What about him? He should have took a dive in the third round. What? But he didn't. Yes, I know. Uh, he won by a knockout in the second. Yeah, but he shouldn't have. But how do you know that he was supposed to lose in the third? I heard Hal telling Jack Graham. Who's Jack Graham? He's Bud's manager. And you say you heard Hal and him talking? Uh, yeah, yeah. A couple of days ago in Bud's dressing room. Uh, just a minute. Are you saying that Hal Humphreys tried to fix a fight? While you were there, Punchy? Yeah. He didn't know I was there. But he must have seen you. I wasn't there. Now, look, Punchy, let's get it straight. I got it straight, Mr. Kilgore. Here's the dressing room, see? Hal and Jack was in there. All right. Next door is another room where I put towels for the fighters when they come out of the shower. Oh, I see. I was in there. Where was Bud Swift? He, he was in the shower. Now, Punchy, you're sure you heard Hal Humphreys tell Bud's manager that Bud would have to lose in the third round? Yeah, he said that to Jack Graham. All right, Punchy. Suppose you and I get down to the DA's office. But, but I don't want to see the DA. I just want you to tell me a story. The DA's trouble. He is for people like Hal Humphreys, but not for you. Come on. I'll drive you down there myself. And then I'll find Jack Graham. Now, look, Mr. Graham... I've told you I've got a witness who heard you and Humphreys making a deal. What are you trying to do? Kill me off in the fight business? You've killed yourself off, in case you don't know it. I've never taken a nickel from any crooked gambler. No? And I've never told one of my fighters to lay down. And anybody says I did is just a dirty, framing double cross. We'll see about that. Who told you I made a deal with Hal? Was it Bud? No. Well, then who is the rat that's trying to squeeze me out of the fight business? You're going to tell me, Mr. Kilgore. And if I don't? Well... You're what, Mr. Graham? Which are you more afraid of? Losing your license as a fight manager? Or going to prison for attempted murder? I didn't try to kill Bud. You told him to lose the fight and he didn't. No, I didn't tell him anything. Listen, I've discovered that Hal Humphreys, besides running a gym, is also a bookmaker. Yeah. And I know that the betting was pretty heavy on your boy to win. But Hal was on the short end. Against him. Yeah. But I didn't make no deal with him. Then what did happen? Well, Hal has been watching Bud work out. Kid went in for a shower, and Hal said he wanted to talk to me. So we went into the dressing room. That kid looks very good, Jack. Yeah. He's in a bank right now. I've got four grand bet on that fight, Jack. It's safe. The kid will take that rummy in two rounds. Jack, I think the rummy ought to take the kid in three rounds. You want Bud to take a dive? That's what I'm leading up to. You see, I'm betting on him to lose. But I can't tell him to take a dive. He's a nice, clean kid, and he thinks... Jack, I don't care what he thinks. I'm betting against him. Nice odds, too. That's your hard luck. It'll be yours and his if he don't go down in the third. Now, listen, You want that kid to fight again, don't you? Well, sure, but... And you want to be around to see him fight, don't you? Sure I do. Okay. You tell him it's a canvas in the third or a funeral around the first. But you say you didn't tell him, Mr. Graham? No, I'm building fighters to win, not to lose. Besides, Bud thinks I'm a great guy. Maybe you are, Mr. Graham. Yeah, a great guy. Somebody in hell's mob put a knife in a kid's back last night. I've been sitting here all day waiting for my turn. But if you told the police, you wouldn't be in this predicament. That would take nerve, Mr. Kilgore. And I haven't got it. I didn't want to lose my license for not reporting Hal to the DA before the fight. Well, he's been reported. I'm sorry that it wasn't done by you. That's Humphreys now, Roger. Come in. Are you the... Yes, I'm the DA, Mr. Humphreys. Uh, what's Kilgore doing here? Come in and close the door. We'll explain everything. Oh, and punchy. How'd you get here? The public defender gave me a ride in his car, Hal. What for, Punchy? Suppose you let me ask the questions, Humphreys. Now, look, Mr. Humphreys, Howard. you told the police that Eddie Lewis was not in your gym last night. Yeah, and he wasn't. They checked. But, Mr. Humphreys, Punchy remembers seeing him there. What? Yes. 
And he remembers something else. A conversation you had with Jack Graham in Bud's dressing room. A conversation? Yes. You told Graham to be sure his fighter lost in the third round so you could collect your bets. Did that punch-drunk pug say that about me? Do you deny it? Sure I deny it. What do you think my racket is, anyway? I think it's fixing fights. Hell, I ain't no punch-drunk pug. Shut up, you... Now, now, now listen, Punchy. I'm your pal, ain't I? Sure. I gave you a job when no other guy in the business would even look at you. Sure. Then how could you tell the DA you heard me trying to fix a fight? You know it ain't true. It is true, Hal. I was in the room next to where Bud was taking his shower, and I heard you and Jack talk. Listen, Howard, if you want to take the word of this punched-up mug against mine, then go ahead and take it. you never get a jury to believe him. Humphreys, I've got another witness I'd like you to meet. What? Will you come in here, Graham? Not... not Jack Graham. Hello, Hal. So, Humphreys, do you still want to deny that you tried to fix that fight? Why, I know you, Hal. I've told him the whole story. Well, uh, so okay. So I was trying to protect my bets. By dictating when Bud Swift had to lose. Well, so what? And when he didn't lose, you or one of your gang went out to pay him off. All right, Don Fowler, what are you guys trying to do? You can't pin a murder rap on me. You said he'd never fight again if he won. Shut huh? up, Jack. Now, look, Humphreys. You've lied about everything in this case from the first minute you talked to the police. But from now on, you're going to start telling the truth for a change. <sighs> Whoever thought I was going to get washed and hung up by a dumb, punch-drunk palooka. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Mr. Judy. What is this? Judy. Eddie, darling. Hey, what? What? You're free, Eddie. Free? Yes. Al Humphreys has made a full statement. His man left. He did the actual stabbing. Holy smoke. Well, what did they knife Bud for? I'll explain it to you, Eddie. Yeah, sure. Why, you're taking me home. Well, I... Well, what about you and Bud? Everything's going to be all right, Eddie. You know, Eddie, I think she's right. Thanks, Mr. Kilgore. Whoever figured out about a public defender sure figured okay. Yeah. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Roger Kilgore, Public Defender, written by Stedman Coles and produced and directed by Jock McGregor, featured Santos Ortega as the Public Defender and Scott Scottsworth as the District Attorney. Others in the cast were Bill Lipton as Eddie Lewis, Bernard Grant as Bud Swift, Bryna Rayburn as Judy Nichols, Lawson Derby as Hal Humphreys, Bob Dryden as Punchy, and Whit Vernon as Jack Graham. Original music was played by Milton Kay. All names, places, and dates used in this program were, for obvious reasons, fictitious. This is the last of the current series of Roger Kilgore, Public Defender. We hope to be back with you in the near future. In the meantime, remember that justice, equal justice, is the sacred right of all people in a democracy. Caruso speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.